Softlane's flexible editing capabilities extend to the ceiling portion of the program. This video over the next few minutes will take you through how to creatively create tray ceilings as well as a vaulted ceiling design. We will begin by changing into ceiling mode and from the ribbon bar selecting the ceiling tray command. The next step in the process will be to determine the offset of the ceiling tray from the outer edge of the ceiling. Finally, we can select auto trace and click within the ceiling of the front room. Positioning the cursor over the tray and right clicking will allow us to edit the tray ceiling to view the properties. Information such as ceiling board thickness, the elevation of the tray, as well as the finish options can all be modified here. Return to the 3D model. Right click on the edge of the tray ceiling and select edit from the quick select menu. From the depth field, we can change or modify the depth of the tray ceiling from 6 inches in this case to 8 inches. Select OK. For this next step, we're going to go in and trace crown molding that will follow the perimeter of the tray ceiling. This can be done by selecting Draw and Profile from within the 3D model. It should be noted that while we are using the Draw Profile command to sketch in crown molding, this same command could be used to sketch in any one of the profiles that are apparent on the screen. Click OK. As prompted, position your cursor on the edge of the tray and click as a surface to add the crown mold. Click to begin the trace. Move your cursor the length of the tray. Click again. Indicate the direction of the crown mold and click. Using a combination of the mouse wheel pan as well as the 3D camera controls, you can now navigate around inside the model without canceling the draw profile command. Once again, pan around and continue the trace profile command until the entire perimeter has been completed. The crown mold is added, accenting the tray ceiling. With the crown mold now added, we can go in and modify the overall dimensions of the crown molding within the tray ceiling. As before, right-click on the object, in this case the crown mold, and modify the height and thickness to suit. It's really just that simple to create a complex tray ceiling such as this. Our next ceiling will take place in the room adjacent to this, the dining room. With the 3D ceiling in view, change back to the floor plan view of the ceiling. Once again, select Ceiling Tray, modify the offset, and select Auto Trace. Note that the manual trace could be used to trace more complex shapes such as hexagons or octagonal tray ceilings. With the tray ceiling added, right click, select Edit. This time, open the Profile option to be able to select from a list of predefined profiles for the tray. Profiles only need to be sketched to scale, saved into the Profile Library for use within your complex ceiling designs. Upon selecting the profile choice, select OK and it will be added to the tray ceiling. The profile can now be modified within the 3D. Upon editing, new heights and widths can be added to the selected fields to update the tray profile. The benefits of modifying within 3D is the instant feedback to how it is going to look. The final ceiling that we're going to modify will take place on the other side of the house where we're going to go in and modify this flat ceiling to be a vaulted ceiling. For this next lesson, we're going to break the three-dimensional model into its own new vertical tab group. By doing this, as we make the modifications within the two-dimensional ceiling plan, we'll be able to instantly see the feedback on the three-dimensional model. Position your cursor over the ceiling in plan view. Right-click, select Edit. Modify the ceiling to have a sloped pitch of 412. Click OK. The sloped ceiling is now displayed inside the 3D model on the right pane of the drawing screen. Position your cursor over the edge of the ceiling, right click and select Edit Edge. Here the style can now be modified from hip to gable. 
using repeat edit, apply the same change to the opposite end of the ceiling. Soft plans fit to ceiling command will allow you to balloon frame the wall to follow the slope of the vaulted ceiling. Rotating the camera focus point to the opposite end of the great room, we can apply the same change down here. Edit the wall, fit the ceiling, select OK. With the ceiling modified and the walls balloon framed, our next step will be to add ceiling trusses. The ceiling truss command can be found in the ribbon bar. Upon selecting it, click to start, sketch the span of the ceiling, and click to finish. Three-dimensional view to the right side of the drawing screen shows us the truss. At this point, right-click, select Edit. The dimensions for the various components of the ceiling truss can now be modified, including the width, the top cord dimension, as well as the bottom cord. Additionally, the style of the truss can be modified. By scrolling through the list, we can change from the default of Fink, in this case, to King. From the ribbon bar, select Move and Copy, which will allow you to select the truss for copying within the room. Move your cursor to the opposite end of the room and click to add a copy. Next, check the equally spaced between and input the count for the number of copies. It's really just that automated to be able to create a vaulted ceiling with interior ceiling trusses for a more rustic view. In conclusion, as we load through and take a look at a series of finished three-dimensional textured models fully furnished with reflections and textures, we can see that the ceilings are an intricate part of the soft plan design process. These complex and yet easy to use tools will allow you to design any type of ceiling needed, including tray ceilings with profiles for both the three-dimensional model as well as your bill of materials.